this training uh, will be tagged, is tagged, secu securing your future. Uh, securing your future. And the major thing we are going to be looking at this, uh, uh, I mean, for this three, in this training, these three months, is to teach you the principles that will not allow you to have crisis in the future. We'll be teaching you how to lay good foundations, and we'll be teaching you on the things, the natures, the habits, that if you exhibit them, so, uh, you'll be haunted in the future. Yes, if you exhibit some habits, you will be haunted. So these uh, three months will be training you as children of God on the principle of what we call uh, loyalty. For three months, it's a training we'll, uh, we'll build on. And uh, we are going to be anchoring this training on Psalm 11 verse 3. Psalm 11 and verse 3. That is the anchor of our training. Let's go to Psalm chapter 11 and verse 3. Let's see. That's the anchor of this training. And uh, these three months, we are going to be looking at several uh, people in scriptures. Several people that uh, injured their foundation and it later affected them in the, uh, in the future. Now, I'm going to be teaching you these three months how important your foundation is. And when we talk about foundation, we'll be talking about several things as we go on. Let's uh, look at the scripture, uh, um, Psalm 11 and verse 3. Let's be on our feet as we read together. Psalm chapter 11 and verse 3. Psalm 11, in honor of God's word. Let's all rise at chapter 11 and verse 3. After the count, we are going to read together from the screen. One, two, and three. Let's go. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, look at that. It ended in, with a question mark. One more time. Let's go. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, receive it. Heavenly Father, we thank you again today. We have come before your throne. We ask, O oh God, that you speak your mind to us. Give us deep insight. Give us deep revelation. Help us, O oh God, that, Father, the words that you will teach us these three months will build our foundations and will guarantee us a glorious future, the future that you have for us in Jesus' name precious name we have prayed and amen now just like we have seen in the scripture if the foundation be destroyed now most people if you are that don't understand uh, engineering terms may not understand what the word foundation mean i will explain using terms and i'll be explaining it and uh, illustrating it in such a way that it will minister to every one of us. Now, we all know that the most important part of every structure is the foundation. I remember I visited um, uh, uh, this man of God, uh, Reverend Abraham Adeyemo of uh, Lifeline Tabernacle. You know, when they bought that land where they are now, it was a dump site. And uh, the environmental law says that you don't build on a dump site until after 25 years. So, when they start to use a place as a dump site, if, they want, if the government wants to sell it out or use it for something else, they will leave it like that for 25 years. Now, because they say it takes 25 years for all the rubbish to completely decay. So, when they bought the place, their engineers went to see them at the Ministry of Environment. And they said, no, you can't build on it. That the only option that you can be given uh, to build on it is uh, the way you are going to show us how you will handle your foundation. You know what Reverend told me? He said, Pastor Prince, there is what we call, there is three-story building under. That is the foundation is three-story building deep. There must be three-story shimanga boshe that they have to dig down up to three stories down to lay the foundation on the ground. Why? So that the building on top will not collapse. And they told them you can't build uh, any building on top of the one that is at the surface. 
that that land cannot carry upstairs. Hallelujah. So can you see that they took time? He told me, sir, sir, the money we invested on this foundation is so much that, imagine three-story building under the ground. Do you know how many tenants they will have if they have three-story building above the ground? Now, that is the amount they spent. Your foundation is so important to the point that you should understand that it is, that is what determines your future. There are so many people that are not living long today. There are so many marriages that are not, cannot progress today. There are so many uh, gifted, anointed, and talented people that cannot do without crisis today because they got it wrong at the foundation. One, oh, she foundation, one, that, that. Now, and when we are talking about the foundation, I'm talking about your beginning. How did you undo the beginning of your marriage? How did you undo the beginning of your ministry? How did you undo the beginning of your business? How did you undo the beginning of your academic pursuit? How did you undo the beginning of the future that you are running towards? I remember one of my friends. I knew his marriage wouldn't last. Now, listen. When they, were, they gave him the list from the wife's family, okay, this is what you are going to bring for dowry. He didn't oppose it. He didn't say no. He agreed to everything they said, but he didn't do it. He said, after all, on that wedding day, will they chase me away? Ah, they can't chase me. So when they, where they asked for 25 keg of palm oil, he bought two bottles. He now poured uh, palm oil around the keg. He said, so that when they are looking at the keg, they'll be thinking it's so full. Thing is pouring out. He now pour it on the body and put two bottles in 20 liters and put it beside. Now, ask me, if after the wedding, somebody decides to carry the keg and he discover that ah, ah, it is this light, what do you think will come out of their mouth? Curses. No, my best. Nick Paul, ah, like Baja, could she buy a Could any young one go? You know? Are you getting what I'm saying? Your foundation is important. In Tobapi Quinle, Uluman Quinu, but your what you should marry. Now, and our case study throughout this training is going to be majorly on most uh, David. I'm a man on me, or she wishes I want me, but we are going to take David. We are going to take David. So many Christians believe that let's do it anyhow. We pray over it. It is not everything that prayer works for. Prayer is not the master key. Prayer is just one of the keys. If you do the right thing, I'm telling you the fact that there, there's a level you don't need to pray about. You don't need to pray. The right thing will be working for you. Am I communicating? Now, the same thing, apart from even marriage, some people don't lay good foundation when it comes to starting business. Don't start anything that will make people to curse you at your beginning. Because that curse can go a long way to affect you as you advance. Am I communicating? That's why we are taking the teaching, securing your future. Tell your neighbor, securing your future. Now let's look at some of the points before I go into the message, the introduction. We are starting this training as a way of positioning you to enter into God's plans for your life. And to make sure that your entry, sorry, that you enter it without having to provoke a curse. That's part of the reason why we are teaching you. Entering God's purpose without having to provoke a curse that will later hunt you down. You know, God has a plan for you, yes. God wants to use you, yes. But if you don't start it well, hear me, you can start it with a curse. We can repeat, ah, instead of a blessing, I can feel a good love. I have seen cases like that. Now, there's one case, one woman came to see me, you know, very anointed man of, uh, woman of God, very anointed, but her ministry was not prospering. I remember I went to pre preach in one of our, in, our, in our church, and by the time I came out, he said, Pastor Prince, we, in Yoruba language, ah, he said, Pastor Prince, we, I remember Gidi Lolo I'm talking about story of 20 something years ago. I remember Gidi Lolo Unfei, Uni Bobi Temi, Lord of Temi, I won't be weary, I won't be a boogie jay, I want langan, now. Now, that was how she said it. And uh, after the service, I now called her to see me in the office. She now came. Uh, Pastor Mrs. or Reverend, what is the challenge? She told me good people are not coming to church. 
all the people that are coming are people with one problem or the other. Problems that we even that could even kill her. That she said so many things. I now started asking her question. Where did you come out from? Were you blessed? Were you released? You know what she said? He said, eh, my pastor is very stubborn. My pastor is very arrogant. And my pastor wants to, wants to, uh, wants to, wants to, uh, does not want my gift to manifest. Ah, so I, out of anger, I left the church. So I told her, I said, Reverend Mrs., you are going to go back home. Go and put your foundation right. Ah, he said, my pastor will not allow me. I said, go. I know your pastor. If you get the telling that Pastor Prince, we said, you should come. So she agreed. I told her to go with about two bottles of wine. So she went. Getting to their church, as the pastor saw him, uh, saw her, she knelt down with two bottles of wine. Daddy, a Jema Binu, Omodi Lushemi, Bimoshe Kuru Ni Church, do a long nick, a long nick to Fuayemi, a long quay me, but Bimoshe Ku, eh, Suri Fumi, King Tokuru. You know what the man of God said? He asked her in Yoruba language. The woman now mentioned my name. Ah, he said, I know Pastor Prince very well. Do you know that the man of God now prayed for her, hear me, and released her to go and prosper? That was when she started prospering. Why? Because she went to put the foundation right. So many children don't understand that there are mysteries to this world. Some people say, you be telling your fiance, that's a wrong foundation. But do you know that that Parents will not release that child with a blessing into your family. That girl can become a Jonah in your life. And you know what Jonah was in that boat? They were suffering loss. Some people are having challenges today. They don't know why. I had Pastor, uh, no, Bishop, uh, what's his name again? Bishop Francis Wally okay, shared the story of how a lady got married without inviting her dad. The daddy said, no, don't, I don't want you to marry that man. He said, tell Bani Wakemawa, if you won't come, don't come. Foundational issues are very important issues. When I head into the marriage, 10 years in the marriage, they didn't have a child. Born again, Neil, but they didn't have a child. She went from place to place praying. Then she, she Bishop Francois Luke said, you know, that time, he used to do this program at, on Liberty Road. Liberty Pavilion, they called that church that time. And he said, that lady came for prayer. As he wanted to lay hand on the lady, something resisted his hand. Then he told her, please see me after the service. You don't pray against a faulty foundation. That foundation must be repaired first before prayer can be answered over it. He said, while he was counseling the lady, he now discovered that it was her dad that was offended that my only daughter was getting married because she's a Christian, I'm a Muslim I opposed her choice she decided not to invite me okay, she will not have a child of her own she made me romo imagine now, and you know these parents may just say it out of saying, but the foundational power will back it because life sits on what we call seed time and harvest so Bishop Waleoke said, they organized two bishops to follow her to go and beg her dad that was an imam. As they got to the house, they started begging the man. The man burst into tears. He cried. The lady to knelt down and cried, my daddy, please, I'm sorry. And the daddy prayed for her. The daddy now gave her life to Christ. I mean, his life to Christ. Ah, you came back. Church brought you back. I will give my life to Christ. He gave his life to Christ within one year. That woman got pregnant and gave back to a child. Cherry, I more young one, do attack on for you, do le car, kiri, or you okay, or you sale, or you petele, or you wish you rule and be kiri, to jacket, need to repeat me, let's see, but jet, or look when you wish it. 
Your foundation must be done rightly. Do it well. I can keep telling you several errors in foundations. I've had a case before of a young man too that lived with a lady, was having sex with her. After several years, he now said, I have found somebody I want to marry. He now left that lady. That lady naked herself and cursed him. And beloved, it attached to him. Was he born again? He got born again later, but the curse did not remove. Foundational issues are mysteries. That's why I always encourage all our people, even if you'll go to land, please reduce this thing. Those of you are the, the horn is too much. Now, even if you go to learn a trade and your boss is saying, Come, you have to do freedom, and you are saying freedom, 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 Jesus Christ, it's a man, Pada. Me on the moon can call law. My Lord, see what you pass up. Pass up, anointing me. Ah, my Lord, perish. Oh, the shirley to Babere. It's the truth. Because the foundation is faulty. That's what we are. We are, we'll be studying a lot these three months. These three months, we'll be studying a lot. I have seen pastors too. Now, that you, Milo, I could call Gagarati of a Kikiri Connie. He now coerce with people. You go and start another church and call the name of the church most anointed God's Spy Evangelical Mission, which is superior to the original. And you start here without the consent. You know, somebody is laboring on the, on the people in the church. Now, you now got to a point, you now begin to pick them. If I talk to this, I talk to this, I talk to this, they will follow me. You go and start your own. You'll be surprised. You will be laboring under close heaven. Though you are gifted, but your foundation is faulty. Foundational issue is the battle that so many people are fighting today. Is Brotunji there? Check for me. That sound is from this side. Foundational issue is the battle that so many people are fighting. That's why even if I don't think it's there. Even in, in marriage, it's not there. I know. They have tampered it. Now, even in marriage, just tell them to leave it as it is. It's not good, but let them just leave it. I will endure. Even in marriage, parental consent, very important. What do I say? Very important. Parental blessing, very important. Don't forget the way I'm lining it. Consent, one. Blessing. Very important. Now, and it must be from both sides. In business, too, start well. Don't do anything that will make your, your boss to now discover and say, ah, and you did like this to me. You did like this to me. Sir, I think when you share and share, not jail. Cases. I always said they have given back to children. They have not gone for parental consent and blessing that I have to send them back. Otherwise, you just be doing roundabout. 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 Now, if you search scripture, you will see that that's what we will be studying. One of the men that really enjoyed stability in his leadership life is a man called David. Stability in his leadership life is a man called David. Let's, let's, let's go into the deep part of the study. Hallelujah. Okay, we are seeing the introduction. We'll be teaching you how to live your life in such a way that there will not be any negative thing chasing you from your foundation. You live your life in such a way that there will not be any negative thing chasing you from your foundation. So let's study David. What are the seeds you sow in order to have a stable life? Number one, 
sow a seed of stability by allowing God to put you into position without having to fight or touch the Lord's anointed. I come again. When I say sow a seed, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about your attitude. Sow a seed of stability by allowing God to put you into your position without having to fight or touch the Lord's anointed slash constituted authorities. Now, Kilo Tumasi, Niyoba, Ma wa wa wa. To ma jeki olorun fi e si po. La i se pe o kolu i fi o royan. Awan eni fo royan. Tabi a awan awan i gima la she. Yes. I will explain. Because some of you say, ah, ah, you don't understand pastor. Where I'm going, ah, anybody that stand on my way, I will remove them from the way. That's one of the reasons why people have problem in their future. But make sure that you sow a seed of stability, which means that in your in whatsoever you doing you are doing, allow God to put you in position. And you must make sure that in your pursuit of going into position, you don't attack his anointed one. You don't attack anyone that is called a constituted authority. Now, who are those authorities? Let's look at them one after the other. Hallelujah. Such as your boss, your seniors in the office, your parents, the leadership order at home, or even your pastor. Now, don't you know that there are mothers that use their mouth to dethrone their husbands before their children so that they can take the position of the father in the heart of their children? I and my wife were discussing something last week. So many women in those days that we knew that brought down their husbands, they rubbish their husband before their children to take that position. Do you know that we discovered, I and my wife were checking, most of them are already dead and their husbands are alive. Now, I want to tell you about one call one day, ni wajua one more, baba yi wo, baba yi wo, baba yi ti obadu, baba yi wo, baba yi wo, I discover that those fathers are still alive. And those mothers that, that won the love of their children by these tricks are dead. What fought them? It was the law of seed time and harvest. Don't bring anybody down because you want to go up. In your place of work. You know, some of you like that, you'll be going to report your, your, your sectional boss. Or your head of department, you'll be going to the management to say, ah, it's not competent, it's not competent, it's not competent. It's not. You, are say, you, are, you are sowing a seed of instability. You will repeat. Now, all of a sudden, they now remove him to put you there. Listen, let God be the one putting you in position. If you do that, you know what you are doing? You are injuring your foundation. There's one marriage like that I know. Listen. This man got married to the best friend of his wife. Of his wife-to-be. Let me say wife-to-be. That lady was, his, uh, was uh, uh, the best friend of his fiancé. So anytime they have misunderstanding, he will go and report his fiancé to the friend. Every time they have misunderstanding, or 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 and things like that. Do you know that that lady now walk herself? She walk herself. They knock out the lady, the fiancé, and she married the brother. So one day I, I was invited. They, they were they used to be members of our church. They, I was invited to their house. They beat themselves like. They beat themselves blue black. So when I now got there, the brother was now saying, I didn't want to marry her. I said, eh, you didn't want to marry her, sir. He said she was my, my fiancé's friend. Anytime we have misunderstanding, she's the one I used to call. I don't even know how I married her. I regret marrying you. 
do you know that even with all the children they have de delivered, there is still no one-week peace in their marriage today? One, near Lafia or second, Ninu delay one, Disney. To the picking, you can learn one tip by Jay. Jacko John Long, no mafia, Siko, show God or call me your conco to the Benny. And my lonely, my lonely, my lonely, ah, my lot to my well born. We have a lot to study. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Now let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 9 to verse 11. I don't know whether we have new American Standard Bible, NASB. Do we have on our media? First Samuel 26, 9 to 11. Put it on screen. Thank you. Let's follow this reading. But David said to Abishai, or let's take it from verse, uh, take it from verse 5. Take it from verse 5. Verse 5. Now David then arose and came to the place where Saul had come. And David saw the place where Saul lay. And Abner, the son of Nair, the commander of his army. And Saul was laying in the circle of the camp. And the people were camped around him. Let's move on. I'm waiting for you. We are stopping at 11. Then David said to Ahimelech, the king, and to Abisha, the son of Zariah, Joab's brother, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul in the camp? And Abisha said, I will go. Then David said, uh, We are taking this. So David and Abisha came to the people by night. And behold, Saul lay sleeping inside the circle of the camp, with his spear struck in the ground at his head. And Abner and the people were laying around him. Look at verse 8. Then Abishai said to David, Today! Look at this. God has delivered your enemy into your hands. Now therefore, please let me strike him with a spear to the ground with one stroke. And I will not, need, I will not strike him the second time before he dies. It means one stroke, he will die. But what was David's response? Don't, don't forget, as long as Saul was king and was alive, David will never become king. And there's this prophecy. As I said, there one left, David in your battle. David in your battle. But David in your battle. And if you see, 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 you at that grave, I am, sir. And what did David say? Show us the scripture. But David said to Abishai, Do not destroy him. For who can stretch out the hand against the Lord's anointing fed? Ah, and be without guilt. Quit telling him, no. To my nowhere. No deceive for anything I feel free on. Chill the ninja be. Move on. Without guilt. David also said, leaves. Surely the Lord will strike or his day will come that he dies. Or he will go into battle and bed. Wait. Can you see that David was not in hurry? Today's generation, eh? I will say more, more in the second service. I can follow the process. Today's generation. Wait for me with that scripture. Adura Baba Yawumi, Nikbata Lopu introduction. Baba Yawumi, Adura Gao. Want him to go to the other side. I'm sorry. 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 I'
but I collected blessing from his mouth. Because even while we were on the way, I was a good son-in-law to be. The same thing my wife to my mom. When we now got married, I still remember on our wedding day, they sat down. I sat in their mix. I was like, 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 Let your foundation be right. During the engagement, they told my wife to go and sit in between my mom and my dad. They told me to go and sit in between her mom and her dad. Lay it at Cocodo Ballet. And I made sure my foundation was all right. Everything they requested for at the introduction, I gave them double double. I gave them double double. So, I was going to go to the house. I was going to go to the house. I to go to the house. I Am I communicating? You are not answering. See, I hear. Foundation. Throughout my mother in law's days on earth, she was, she would always come around and she was always blessing me. That's what I did for him. Cherry Ogun told Jao Koloko, Kishogun Akope, Kishogun CAC, Kishogun Afoma, or your man Pia Ruru and Ogun, Kishogun Kituni, Kishogun, Kishogun Fa, Ubreke Lusobe, Kalabama, Kishogun, Mini Morning, come me, Ogun, Quinle, Lun Jao Koloko. You saw during my wife's birthday, you saw all my in-laws were here. The eldest was here. The one that followed was here. The third one was here. That's the kind of foundation I lay. Do you want to have peace? That's the kind of foundation you should lay. All my sons that are closer to me, ask them. I always tell them, if you can give me something for festive season, hello me during Easter, when God dey wa, hello me anya, that dey jekin transfer word do fun yin, bo ti e kere, mo man so fun be ba se nse fun pastor yin, e ma se sodo awon obi yin, atodo awon ano yin na. And that is you know we are very very close. Oh no more. To bawa, papa, daddy mufera, chotira die, ya ya we, chotira. To bawa, and you know, I, I, when I see children that are obedient, I'm happy. Instantly he will buy. Not because he has one million now, but he is because he wants to do what is right. So many of you don't want to do what is right. And you say, I want to prosper. Allah ajek ko prosper, ki matun fite meku. We are not yet through with that reading. So David said, I will not. Eh? The Lord's anointed? Some of you are not afraid eh, to speak against your superiors. Imagine if you are saying you are born again, you are the type, you, some of you can you even speak to your daddies and your mommies anyhow. Can't prosper. I'm telling you the truth. Except you go back and be and beg them, let them pray for you. Even if your daddy is speaking rubbish and your mommy is speaking nonsense, it is not from you they should hear it. So David said, I will not lay my hand on the Lord's anointed and go guiltless. Listen, let's, let's take the reading. Understand in life that there are constituted authorities. One, in families, we have Parents and superior. Now, who are the consistent authorities in families? Parents. In those days, we were taught, we were raised. Our parents will tell you, at your first salary, who do you take it to? It's not to church. You take your first salary to your daddy and mommy. 
if you see after this, is to your dad. Today, because the system has been, has been tampered with, you say, no, I will take it to my mommy. I love my mommy, I don't love my dad. Da your daddy is the highest authority in your family. That's how God arranged it. See right here. That's why, that's why, so Create respect for their daddy in their presence. It is their daddy that can bless them, not you. Daddy, daddy, you badun. You won't do it. You won't do it. Daddy, you won't do it. You won't do it. Ah! Enwe ko enwe kere. Ule ba. I know some of you will be thinking, maybe because your own daddy is good. My daddy is not good in his time on Ato. We were in primary two when my daddy followed another strange woman. My daddy was a captain in the army. We attended command children's school. In those days, soldier children, in those days, in the 80s, paid 30 naira per term. Civilian children paid 50 naira per term. Do you know that when my dad chased my mom out of the house, my dad went to the school and told them in the school, that they are no longer my children. So let them pay the 50 naira that civilian children's children are paying. So it's not that my dad is good. My mom told us so many things that she went through in the hands of my dad. So I hated my dad. But when I got born again, you know what God said to me, son? If you don't want that thing to continue, if you want children of your own, don't relate with your dad based on what your mother told you. Relate with your dad based on what the Bible says. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long and that it may be what? Well with you. Dishonor your father and your mother. Your days will not be long and it will not be well with you. It may come so well. It's the Bible. Should I continue? Because I know you don't like it. Because you mothers, some of you mothers, let me not say generally, some of you mothers, you want to devalue your, your husbands before your children so that you are thinking, ah, when these children make it, you know, and I see some children will be saying, ah, if I make it, before I will give my daddy 50,000, I will have given my mommy 5 million. Ah, you are going against the established principle of God. Jesus said that the church is his bride, that him, Jesus, is the husband. And he related to the husband as Jesus and the wife as the church. That's what we call constituted authorities in families. You were not daddy. You were not constituted authority in family. You were not good to share. Because some of you daddies too that are constituted authorities, you are not doing what will make them to, to respect you. God gave you that position, but you need character to maintain it. I'm not praising myself. I'm giving all glory to God. My wife will always thank God for my life. Ah, only thank you. There was a day, she was, was a few days ago, she was telling somebody, he said, my husband, he will pay for the CS eh, and still tell me that he has promised God that all his children, he must do proper naming ceremony. And I was laughing. He said, when we gave back to Onyi through CS, she was telling me, oh, you don't kick cow now. I said, no, if I kick cow for any other to do with uh, Nemi, I must kick cow for Oyin too. When we gave back to uh, Oriola, she, she was trying to remind me, honey, I said, no, if I kill for the two, this third one too must. And God has always been providing. Why? Because I know my responsibility. So, listen, every wife, it is your responsibility to establish your husband's authority. See, I hear. I didn't hear you. If that thing is not established, hear me. There may not be children in that house. So. Go, and, go and read scriptures. God blesses what we call established systems that you follow. If the system is not properly established, God will not prosper it.
Why do you think our mothers will all look at their husbands and because I love you, 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 I love not to talk about you that have a born-again husband. A husband that you know that does not have a girlfriend. You're not standing in the presence of your children. They're telling you, eh, eh, eh. In the presence of the children. You'll be surprised one day. Your children too will say, Daddy, because of that's what mommy has been saying. Tap your neighbor, say, open your eyes. You are in a school. You cannot, you cannot sleep because you will face the exam. Constituted authority exists even in our society too. We have constituted authority in our society. We have constituted authority in church. We have leaders by divine election and leaders by appointment. Listen, you can't become great Sorry, sorry. You can become great without hurting them. Uli din la. I want my life and realize you go back to Kweje, ni what you want. Uli ga, la i bati en tu wan wajuje. A constitute a constituted authority is anyone placed in power by authorities, either by natural or spiritual authority. See, I hear. Now, who gave you your father? Look up. Who gave you your father? Did you choose your father by yourself? It's God that gave you, which means God put him in that position of your father. Don't devalue him. Because of what your mother said. Don't devalue him. Who gave you your mom? It's God. Don't devalue her. This is how we here. Open your eyes. David knew that if he attacked King Saul in order for him to become king, somebody too will one day attack him to become king as well. Because life sits on the law of seed time and harvest. Now, if you look clearly, let, look, let, look, look up, let's look up. If you look clearly, now, you will begin to see that some things that happen, happen to your parents are already happening to you. Some of you, if you look clearly, what's in Jorama? Somebody must stop that flow. How do you stop the flow? You stop the flow by stopping the, the attitude that they put up to have what they have. I told myself, when I was coming into marriage, I, my daddy could not keep one home. Till he died, he was marrying wives. I told myself that if I eventually get married, I would do everything within my capacity to maintain my marriage. That this curse will not flow in my own direction. I knew what, what my daddy involved in that made him to go into such. Why? Because I didn't want that thing to continue. If you bring somebody down to go up, whether you fast and pray or not, somebody will bring you down to, to go up. Say here. Say here. Why do you think there are several errors today. The answer is clear. People are no longer patient. They want quick results without considering the consequence. You don't have to destroy anyone because you want to achieve anything. Beloved, even when Saul was chasing after David, 
he didn't rebel against him. Show me 1 Samuel chapter 18, 10 and 11. 1 Samuel chapter 18. We are very fast. I have just 10 minutes more. 10 and 11. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Now it came to pass on the next day and that, that an evil spirit from God came upon Saul. And he, he raved in the midst of, of the house while David was playing the apps with his hand as usual. And a spear was in his hands. Verse 11. What did he not do with that spear in his hands? Verse 11. Be fast. Be fast. Saul hauled the spear. For he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David escaped from his presence how many times? Twice. Did he fight back? No. Do you know why? All that David was avoiding, he was avoiding to set up wrong foundation. My daddy died inside my car. Upon all the things, he didn't show up eh, when he left us until when I was in SS1. I was in primary two when he left. I was in SS1 when he returned. But the time he returned, I was already born again. I'm a born again. I'm when you come, then practice and say, and she born again in your D. You born wuru wuru ni, born wuru wuru. Born again to your D. Air fire, it's you know. Ah, oh Tony, you know me. Bolivar bet bet here, grab. I couldn't keep malice. He got to a point when I started giving my, my daddy little, little, little money. He got, there was one day, he called me. I gave him money. He called me. Ah, mukombo mumba eke. Papa, you dem okay? Ola Jesus nante. Kuyeke ri jeu yeke njeki ya jeni. But simba jeki baba miche ya. Omo mina jeki njia. Ya Quickly, number two. Sow a seed of stability. By being good to fathers and constituted authorities. Sow a seed of stability by being good to constituted authorities. Let's put it that way because of my time. Listen, I wrote here. When you know that people are placed over you, serve them well. Service is a seed. If you serve, you will be served. If you don't serve, you will never be great to the point of being served. It is just the truth. If you serve, you will be served. Some pastors may not know why their churches are not growing. One I want to ministry. I know some of that have been doing ministry almost, almost 15 years now. You remember me, even Yahweh going for Droti. Do you know why? He never served. Who did you serve? I can't lose me. I can't lose me. Maybe you are under him. Serve. I visited our brother's office many years ago. Was he not? He was strong. He didn't come to church. Man, his boss was coming. I was shocked. He quickly stood up. He stood up. We also stood up. See, mama, mama. He said, sir, my pastor came visiting. And the white man greeted us. Some people are too big to serve. I'm doing a little gun. What if you could dwell? I'm doing a little gun. Call me gun. Ah, ah. Oh, be the young go to Fanny. Okay, what have you done with the Fanny? 75 years old man. The fair fair could be respectful. Come be lower kitchen grandpa in coming. Let's go back to the word. Imagine just sort of in LA. So when you know that people are placed over you, you serve them well. In fact, serving them well is a is a seed that will determine how you will be served in the future. Second Kings chapter 3. Show me verse 11. Second Kings chapter 3 and verse 11. Beloved, I will want you to know. Okay? But Jehoshaphat said, 
Is there not a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Elisha, the son of who? Shaphat is here. Who used to pour water on the hands of Elijah? He was a prophet in the making. She be prophetic ministry. Lo ye kolo face. Abi. E woni kutu ma abomisi. Elijah lo wok. Kuma ba for where? That's what why so many anointing is not rubbing on so many sons of prophets today. She be king shah tila shosh king ma king kro men. Why my minister? You mean that tila shosh king ma kro men? I don't have any connection with pastor. I don't have anything. She be king shah tila shosh king kro men. Who see problem? Why there are no anointing bow? He went beyond church service and was washing Elijah's hand. Now, what later happened to Elijah? He became a world-known prophet. Let's finish it this so I can stop where I'm supposed to stop in this service. Quickly. Quickly. Below. I will want you to know this. Quickly, listen. That it is not in your place to rebuke a constituted authority over you. You don't rebuke or correct. Or we, we call it what we call upward correction. See, I want you to Are you getting what I'm saying? What did ba the Bible say about it? Sorry, not say it's Pastor Prince. This one. First Timothy chapter 5, 1 and 2. Please be fast. I have three minutes more. First Timothy 5, 1 and 2. First Timothy 5, 1 and 2. Look at this. He said, Do not sharply rebuke who? Didn't hear you. Talus obey. Do not sharply rebuke an older man, but rather appeal to him as a father, to the young men as brothers. Because some of you will say, I shall me a this. Don't let them send you to your early grave. Don't rebuke. You don't rebuke an elder. You admonish them. You correct them with wisdom. Quickly. David did not rebuke his father Saul. Instead, he was good to him. Show us 1 Samuel 24, 16 to 19. 1 Samuel 24, 16 to 19. Now, I now wrote my experience here. God said to me one day, when I, 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 I gave, sorry, now this is what God said to me. When I give a sergeant the opportunity to notice the error of a general, it is for him to make, it, sorry, it is not for him to make announcement of it, but for him to learn not to make such mistake. When David had finished speaking these words to Saul, 24, 16 to 19, yes, to Saul, this is what Saul. Saul said, Is it your voice, my son David? Then Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Why was he crying? Because David said, Daddy, you know I never attacked you. You know I never wished you bad. Why do you not want to kill me? Saul now started crying. Ah, David, I didn't know you are the one. I didn't know you are the one. I'm sorry. Please be very, very wise. There are certain things you cannot pray out of. And when you, come out, you can't pray out of them. There are some things you just need to catch the blessing to come out of. By, by virtue of the blessing. Am I communicating? Beloved, even if you have the opportunity to nail your superior, don't do so. Life sits on the law of seed time and harvest. Upon the, opportunity, upon the opportunity that David had to finish Saul and become king according to the promise of God over his life, he didn't do so. Even when, when men mounted pressure on him, 
to do so. He refused. Let's begin from the home front. So, uh, so a seed of stability, hear me, to your parents and seniors. So a seed of stability to your parents and your seniors. Avoid uh, announce their mistakes. Take it to the next level in church. Place a word, uh, sorry, uh, and, and things like that. There's no time. There's no time. So even taking your loyalty to church, anywhere you find yourself, don't destroy one place because you want to build your own. Or else, if you do that, you have sown a seed. You know, I told you, secure your future. If you do that, you have, ha you have injured your future. I always tell God, whenever I'm praying for my daughters, Uluwa Jo, Bami Dia Omo Imu, Ile Odoma Jeku Yomo, Uluwa Mi Ubato Mo Kokonje, Omo Lomo Kokonje, Nikba Odomi, Kusia, Kuseni Noti Mo Bato Mo Eje, Kusobi Tuli Sope, Ah, Ah, Tuli Prince Sweet, Lomo Mi Uche Law School, Omo Mi, Omo Beni Mi Uche Law School, Uluwa Jo, I always pray for them, Bami Dia Omo Imu, You know, Ile Odoma Yo, Oman Fe Wodo, Lati Explore, Mani Uluwa, Sha Shanu, Ile Odoma Jo Yomo, Maje kan shubu, oluwa ba mi di won mu, ai mo yi bi ton lo ti mi o ba won lo, oluwa ti ewo temi, wo ipinle, temi kan fi lele, ko se ni kankan na laye, to ma so pe ah 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 ah, o de ba mi sun ko fe mi ko se ni na laye, oluwa ni won igba ti mi o se, oluwa ba mi di awon mo imu. That's the prayer I used to pray for myself and to pray for my children. But what o je ki o ba so ko so ko ni e, mura omo ya je nu e. It's true. Ko born again dollar. I want to see some kung into the tier. I will be going to some kung. We will have to the tier. Lobo drop out in law school. To the tier, I'm going drop out in medicine school. We have to be more to my law school. To it, we let she let it be. Are you hearing me? Put your foundation right. Have you learned something this morning? Are you sure? We are going to continue in the next service. If you can be in the next service, I would like it. But rise up on your feet. Oh, today is anointing service. Now, only those.